Another bank was robbed. This time around, the witness is a little bit less sure about what they saw. The first letter was either an I or a J. Okay, and what about the second letter? Yeah, the uh, second letter was either a zero or the letter O. Not really sure. What about the third letter? Third letter was definitely a V or a Y. Anything else? After that, there was the number four. That's all I got. You've once again narrowed it down to 10,000 possible license plate values. By the end of the video, you'll know enough about the OR operator in regular expressions in order to write a pattern that will match plates like this. The OR operator allows you to say one pattern or another is going to be valid for matching against. If this were a theoretical course in computer science, you would call this the union or the alternation operator, but we're going to call it the OR operator. In the previous video, we introduced the AND THEN operator and set up your machine. You can find a link to it down in the description, as well as some instructions to be able to follow along today. To get back to the project we set up previously, I'm gonna open Visual Studio Code and go to File, Open Recent, and then find the directory we had set up that is Learn Regular Expressions. In that directory, there were three files that we're using to be able to practice searching with regular expressions. And let's start out with the English words file. This one has about 400,000 English words in it. In order to search using regular expressions, I'm gonna to go to Edit and then Find. And remember, you need to enable regular expressions by selecting this third button and being sure it's highlighted in blue. Let's imagine we're trying to write a search for all words that contain either fall or spring. How can we write a regular expression for words that will include either of these? The OR operator in regular expressions is the vertical bar. So let's try this out. Fall, and notice before we complete this regular expression by adding OR spring, there are 170 words that contain fall as a part of them. So now I enter the vertical bar and spring. And now notice there are 265 words that match this pattern because it's words that contain either fall or spring. Each time you press enter, you'll be taken to the next result. So after spring, into spring, ashful. And so notice we're matching words that contain either of these two expressions. What if we wanted to find lines that ended with fall or spring? So we can change our pattern to be fall and then the end of line or spring and then the end of line. Notice we're now down to 75 matches and each of the lines that we're matching is going to end in either fall or spring. I wanna point out that as I've written these patterns, the yellow characters are the ones that we are literally matching against and searching for. The blue characters are operators or special characters. These are extra pieces of information we're giving to the regular expression engine in order for it to do a more specialized search than a direct match. You might be wondering, could we add a third or a fourth option to the OR operator and create a chain of possibilities here? So fall or spring or winter at the end of a line. And sure enough, we can. Notice there are 75 matches for lines that end in fall or spring. And if we add winter followed by end of line, we'll find that there are 82 possible matches. With the OR operator, order doesn't matter. Unlike the and then operator where the order matters. So F and then A and then L and then L and then dollar sign. If I were to place fall at the end of this list instead of winter followed by the end of line, notice we have the same set of matches that will result. So with the or operator, the order of the set of items doesn't matter. An early challenge in understanding how to read and write regular expressions is understanding their order of operators. Just like in math where we can have an expression such as two, plus three times four. Knowing the order of operations in math, we know that this part of the expression is going to be evaluated first, right? It's as if there was an implicit set of parentheses placed around three times four that caused us to multiply that value before adding two to it, right? Because the multiplication operator in algebra has a higher precedence than the plus and minus operators. When regular expressions, the AND THEN and the OR operators have a relationship of precedence as well. The AND THEN operator has a higher precedence. So that means there's an implicit set of parentheses that go around each of these terms. So if we add parentheses to this regular expression, you'll notice that we have the same number of matches. These are two different ways of writing the same thing. I'm gonna remove these parentheses so that I can show you one other application of them that's very powerful. We can also surround this regular expression in parentheses and place another part of a pattern before it, such that this pattern will be matched followed by fall or spring and winter end of line. 
So what if we tried searching for something like BE and then fall or spring or winter? If I update my regular expression to have those parentheses, notice nothing has changed. The par pairs of parentheses are only used for indicating an order of operations, just like in math. And if I put the letters BE before it, notice that we're matching four words now, befall, the spring, the winter, and miss befall. And notice we are composing a more elaborate regular expression by combining these two fundamental operators, B and then E, and then we have this even more complex regular expression where in it we're saying spring or winter or fall, each of those followed by an end of line. If we can have some pattern followed by some other pattern in parentheses, could we have another pattern following those parentheses? And yes, we can. And in fact, here we probably should because we've got this repeated end of line character that's in each of our three options. We can remove the redundancy in this pattern by adding the dollar symbol, which is match the end of a line after these parentheses. So we're saying whatever is matched inside of these parentheses and then end of line, which would allow us to get rid of this repeated dollar symbol. So now we're saying match the characters BE and then fall or spring or winter and then the end of line. So let's rewrite our regular expression in VS Code by removing the end of line from each of these three options in our OR term and then adding it after the parentheses. So we've factored it out of these three options and we're now matching the exact same patterns we were before. So let's get back to the opening mystery. The witness said they saw the first four digits but they weren't really sure what they were. The first one was either an I or a J. The second one was either a zero or an O. The third was a V or a Y, and the fourth was the number four. Why don't you try writing a regular expression that searches our licenseplates.txt file for a match? Pause the video here and try and write this on your own. Rather than trying to do this all at once, let's break down our problem and focus on the very first part of the pattern. It was the letter I, and then we're going to use the OR operator, which is the vertical bar, to separate it and the other possible pattern match, a J. As we just learned, we need to group this term together. So we add grouping parentheses around it. This first part of the term is followed by either a zero or an O. And once again, the vertical bar OR, and we're grouping this term so that it matches either a zero or an O at this particular position. The third term was either a V or a Y. And the fourth was just a four. And so now we've translated our original search intent into actual regular expression syntax. And we can read this as I or J, and then zero or O, and then V or Y, and then four. Remember the and then operator is implicit between the terms of our regular expression pattern. For completeness, because we know this was the start of the license plate, we can add the caret, which matches the start of the line. Where does the caret go? Always before the horse. So let's try searching for this pattern. We'll use the start of line symbol and then an I or a J. And notice we have 783 possible matches that start with either an I or a J. And then a zero or an O. We are down to 29 possible matches and then a V or a Y. We're down to three possible matches, but that last bit of information, a four, brings us to a single license plate match for this particular regular expression, JOY4292. And with this regular expression, you found the matching license plate of the getaway car. Great work. The first operator you learned was AND THEN, and it's implicit. So if we had written a pattern such as this one, I and then J and then zero and then the letter O, we would have matched one specific sequence of characters, one after the other after the other. But today we learned about the OR operator as well as the ability to use parentheses to control the precedence of our operators. Precedence is one of the more confusing topics when learning regular expressions. So I wanna take an example we've already learned and reinforce what we've talked about so far. Let's imagine we use the OR operator in the same places we did for the solution. If we wrote a regular expression like this, the way that you would read it is I or J and then zero or O and then V or Y and then four. The reason this wouldn't work is because of the implicit and then, which is a higher precedence than the or operator. 
this says J and then O, and it's as if we had parentheses around this particular term based on the implicit order of operations that's built into regular expressions. The same would be true for the second term. It's as if there's implicit parentheses there. However, we can use parentheses to our advantage to override the default order of operations. And so what we did was we placed parentheses around the first term so that we said I or J, and then we continued on and we made a group out of the second term and the third term. Now we would read this regular expression as I or J, and then zero or O, and then V or Y. If we had written our original regular expression like this with only one set of parentheses, we would have matched either an I or a J followed by a zero or O followed by V, or Y followed by four. It's as if there would have been implicit parentheses around these three terms. Having nested parentheses like this is possible. In a future video, we'll learn another capability of these parentheses that allow us to set up what's called capturing groups for use when we're searching and replacing text. And this gives us a real power tool. In the next video, we're gonna look at the third operator, which is the repeats operator that allows us to say some pattern repeats some number of times in our regular expression. So that's the OR operator in regular expressions. Great work today. If you were able to solve today's mystery, please leave a thumbs up. If you have any additional questions about regular expressions or anything that was unclear in this video today, please leave a comment below. You should subscribe to the channel if you want additional content on regular expressions or other computer science concepts. I'm Chris Jordan. I'm a professor who teaches computer science and my goal on this channel is to make content that's easy for you to follow along with at home. I'll see you back here for the repeats operator in the very next video.